Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with the most entertaining fantasy football podcast on the planet. We're blessing your ears on this beautiful Friday. It's Noah Selby. And I'm Wes Selby. And we're here back with another episode of Fourth and Troll, baby. It is finally the 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 beginning of week one has officially come and we are in the regular season of the nfl we are full on into fantasy football it feels great it feels great it feels great to be here wes how are you feeling i'm feeling great i feel better than the rams do but i am so happy to finally watch a regular season game live present we're here noah how are you how are you feeling I'm doing okay. I'm I'm recovering as a uh, as a Allen Robinson owner last night in multiple leagues. Mm. I am recovering, and um, you know, I should have. You know, I I was just you know it was nerf for nothing. You know, it was nerf yeah. for nothing to the moon. And, I get it. And, the risk. Uh, it was a risk. It was a risky start. So I've heard, and so I went for it. And uh, you know, a lot of football left to play this weekend. So it'll be a, it'll be a fun week. But. But yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a great man. I, I I think you're probably feeling also a little better than me because I don't know if any of our listeners got a chance to vote on our troll poll of the week. But we chucked out a troll poll for who the our listeners and our our viewers and our supporters and our troll fourth and trollers, uh, who was fantasy team between the two of us they liked better. And Wes, you got like two thirds of the votes, man. Yeah. So thank congratulations. You. Thank you. I, I, I was, I looked through and I tried to figure out who was the standout player. Was it, did I draft someone that was really great? Did someone think that you had like a, a weak link somewhere? I don't Can't think people, really tell. I don't think people believe me that, that Brandon Cooks is truly is the least sexy name to draft, but he's going to be a wide receiver too. No doubt in my mind. So maybe, that may maybe have been I'm not that. sure. That may but have been thank it. you. Thank yeah, you. All congr- of you. Congratulations. Listeners. It was a very, it was, I, I, I want to say it was a close race. It, it wasn't though. You, you were, you pretty much ran away with it from the beginning. And so, well, so uh, we'll you know. see when we go toe to toe, who wins. Yeah, you That'll know, be a, we'll see a what happens. You know, all the haters, y'all can uh, just listen to West <laughs> from now on. And I'll take my one third of the listeners and we'll form our own militia there you go that's wow. what i was looking for there <laughs> <laughs> we have a fantastic show today we're going to talk about our season kickoff buffalo bills trouncing the los angeles rams uh last night and then we're going to talk about kind of what we expect for the rest of week one of this beautiful fantasy football and nfl season but first things first let's jump into some news that we desperately need to give to you guys before and uh this week you know this full week weekend kind of goes full on and uh give you some need to know information when you're setting your lineups for this week Yes, let's get to it. There's a lot here. We're going to fly through this so we can get into some important information and talk about the game. Let's get things going here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They changed their depth chart again. The QB situation now is that Kenny Pickett is officially the QB2. Last time we told you that Mason Rudolph was number two, but they changed it again. When Mike Tomlin was asked about it, he said, quote, it was a clerical error. The cut and paste component was the cut and paste component. So whatever that means. Yeah. You know, they run their front office out of the DMV. So (laughs) kind of how that went. So I I guess whatever Tomlin. Yeah. Sounds good. Whatever. Anyway, in green Bay Packers tight end, Robert Tunyon has finally recovered from his ACL injury, which he suffered in week eight last season. However, Alan Lazard's status is now questionable due to an ankle injury. The Packers injury report will be released later today, which will likely determine his status. So be on the lookout for that. If you've got Lazard on your roster, Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the face of the NFL has directly addressed us fantasy football players on who to draft and who to look, be on the lookout for with the chiefs wide receivers. Here is his answer. I think the biggest thing is just going to be that it's going to be a different player every week. It's going to be someone different. So I'm sorry to all you fantasy football guys, but it's going to come from everywhere. So you're going to have to kind of choose the right guy every week. 
Thanks. Thanks a bunch, Patrick Mahomes. Thanks, Pat. Really appreciate that. That, uh, that QB8 helpful. ranking doesn't look too crazy right now, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it does yeah. not. Hey, it's – ugh. Thanks. Awesome. I have a Chiefs receiver. You have a Chiefs receiver. Yeah. Whatever. Good. Uh, Buffalo Bills tight end Dawson Knox on Wednesday signed a four-year contract extension for $53 million. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not directly related to fantasy, but it is worth noting since he was tied for most touchdowns by a tight end last season. And uh, last night, uh, the money did not pay out quite right. He only had one catch for five yards. So 1.5 points off of the $53 million uh, contract. We'll see if that pays out a little bit later. Score. And a quick score. Yeah. Way to go, Buffalo. No, he's awesome. He's, he'll yeah. be fine later on. Quick injury report. And then we're going to get to the rest of the show here. Notable players who avoided the injury report. Elijah Mitchell, Debo Samuel, Darren Waller, Jalen Waddell, and Titans rookie wide receiver Traylon Burks. They are all good to go for Sunday. George Kittle, however, is dealing with a groin injury, and Shanahan says it will be day-to-day, and that evaluation could lead to Kittle likely missing week one. So if you drafted him, you might have to slot in with a backup tight end or even pick up a backup tight end for this week. Yeah, yeah, you reel in with that, Noah? You feel you feel bummed? I just – I don't understand. I don't know what it is about San Francisco and how they always start the season with, like, nine, like, like, like nine guys. Million injuries. All yeah. just – all just hurt and not ready to go. I don't get it. And – or getting hurt in week one. And so, I – Kittle owners, I don't know how early you drafted, but you got to figure something out. You definitely got to pivot because they are in the later window of games as well. And so, you're yeah. going to want to probably – going into your Sunday, have somebody in mind because I, if I'm guessing, I don't think he's going to play. I don't think they're going to force it. If they need to, they're playing Chicago. Be prepared. That's all we got to say. Be prepared, especially with Kittle's injury history. Speaking of which, here we go. Classic Christian McCaffrey has a shin injury and is on the injury report. Now it doesn't look like it's too serious, but golly, I, my, my, (laughs) my soul, when that notification came up on my phone. Right. And it was like Christian McCaffrey added to the injury report. I went, you've, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like you, you're kidding me from what I've read yeah. and what Matt rule said, somebody like cleated him in the shin or something like that. And he like his shin got like cut or something. Yeah. Matt rule said he's good to go, but I, I, it's hilarious. I, I might have peed a little whenever that, and whenever that notification came up because that yeah. was just, I was just, very frightened. Love it. He'll play. Don't worry, but it's just funny how that happened. Last two uh, players we're going to talk about here. Falcons rookie wide receiver, Drake London, his status on week one will be decided on Saturday. They are still trying to decide if his injury from preseason is going to be uh, viable for him to play. And lastly, JK Dobbins from Baltimore Ravens has been activated off the pup list but still hasn't been cleared for contact, which would mean Mike Davis and Justice Hill will take over the backfield in Baltimore. That is it for the news heading into the first Sunday of 2022 regular season. Let's talk about last night's game, Bills and Rams. What a great, exciting game, huh, Noah? (laughs) It was, yeah. I mean, what a thrilling (laughs) match that was. We had 20 total points in the first half. I, yeah. we were just th- turning the ball over. We were, I don't like the first half. I was like, well, this is not what we were hoping for here. And then we, you know, turned it on a little bit in that second half and the bills really ran away with that. Um, yeah. What a freaking game. And I mean, completely lopsided. Yeah. Very. It, it was, I, I almost don't even, I, I think from the analysis of what I've thought of so far as to what's happened, it, that that Los Angeles Rams offensive line does not look very good. And that Buffalo Bills pass rush looks very good. So yeah. it was a mix of those two, um, the highest of the highs and some pretty low lows. But I, I'm i not worried necessarily. I'm not, you know, I'm not counting out the, the, the reigning Super Bowl champions after getting beat by 21 in week one. Uh, it just didn't really look like they had any like groove going really. I mean, the drive where they scored the touchdown to Cooper cup that looked 
Uh, which, by the way, was anyone shocked that it was a Cooper Cup touchdown? Nobody, I don't think. No, no, no. Right. Four no's. No, okay, no, no four. shock. No shock. Yeah, no shock at all. Um, that drive looked pretty good, but again, that was off a turnover, and I think they only had to drive like – they didn't have to drive very far. I believe they were already in their own field uh, end of the field whenever they got that ball. <sighs> yeah, it, a bit a bit different than I think what a lot of us expected. I, the Bills looked clean on both sides of the ball, even in spite of three turnovers in the first half. Josh Allen yeah. dominated. So, I mean, with that in mind, Noah, you and I both said our must-starts were, you know, two of the – you know, best players in fantasy, Josh Allen, yeah. Cooper Cup. They crushed it. They were incredible. Hey, Even Wes, with job on that call. Yeah. Hey, good. Hey, good idea, Noah, to start Josh Allen. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, everybody. I know you weren't going to do that unless I said it. So, uh, very good job. Yeah. Josh Allen was a freaking animal at what everyone thought we would be coming into the season, an MVP favorite. He looked just like it 26 for 31, 297 yards, three touchdowns. He had two interceptions. One of them wasn't his fault. Right. The other one was a little wonky. Um, and then he ran the ball like, 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 I, what, like, what more can you want? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like he's, he ran 10 carries for 56 and a touchdown, three passing touchdowns. He, he nearly had a 35 point game. These were like sliding just... runs either. These weren't scrambling for a first no. down. This was like, this was like play action pulls it like cam newton did back in 2015 and like runs up the middle like yeah, he is he, he running he back reggie, <laughs> he, he he new orleans saints reggie bush oh, dove gosh. over the miami <laughs> dolphins he, he did that like for his on a first down and then to get his touchdown and and he's getting drilled and every single time he gets up he's smiling Mean, what more can you want, team. man? What more can you want? Hard he, loves, like he loves football. That team is very, very, very good. They are and, very good. And I would, you know, I I would probably say, that you, you know, I, I think we definitely see them make a deep run again. Um, Absolutely. The players that did not do so hot are the guys that we said might be a risk to start. Noah, you want to – let's talk about – <laughs> Poor James Cook. Um, well, first off, we uh-huh. were right. We were right. They were risky. They were risks. And yes. So if you did start them, hey, we warned you. Right. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah, James Cook, disappointing first game to see. Um, I definitely thought he was going to get more of the receiving work. Uh, and unfortunately, in the first half, they finally brought him into the game and he took one toss to the right side and he fumbled on it. And I don't think he got another snap the rest of the game. So Sean McDermott was like, yeah, that's a big old nope for, uh, for this guy, for this game. And so, uh, yeah, he, he actually puts you in the negative points if you started him. So, um, sorry, I'm not even going to say sorry. I I told you it was a risk, but there could have been a high reward. Maybe if he doesn't fumble, he sees a little more of that work because Josh Allen threw to the running backs. He threw to the running backs. Devin yeah. Singletary had um, or no, sorry, not Devin Singletary. Zach Moss had six targets in the game uh, and he caught all six of them. So, I mean, De- you know, Josh Allen threw his backs. Maybe we see that happen for James Cook a little more in the future, in the future of the season. Maybe he gets a little bit more of that role, but Zach Moss, you know, got a good amount of run here. He had six carries. He also had six targets, six catches for 21 yards. He, had a fumble, but if without, I mean, if he didn't fumble there, he was looking at nearly 10 fantasy points. And so, um, yeah, James Cook, that was a little rough. And then, Wes, your risky start. Yeah, I try to give caution about Allen Robinson because, as I said, Matt Stafford has a man crush on Cooper Cup, and that was proven tonight. Cooper Cup yeah. had 15 targets, 13 catches, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah. Allen Robinson had two targets he did. and one catch for 12 yards he did so i don't know quite yet if this is a sign of what's to come for al robinson's future this season with the rams it may be i, I mentioned it too that this may just be the game situation against the Super Bowl contenders the bills it may just be go to your guy go to the guy you know and yeah. trust they're playing the titans next week so let's see how the rams do how they find i'm sorry the bills are playing the titans the rams are playing the falcons next week yeah and let's find out how al robinson does there 
And uh, let's also finish up here with our don't start so we can jump into some fun sleepers, busts, studs, and duds. Finish up with don't starts. You and I both said Tyler Higby and Devin Singletary, and they kind of did all right. Actually. They both did pretty good. <laughs> they both did pretty good. It's pretty yeah. funny. I I believe the the contingencies we were talking about with Tyler Higby was like you know if you're in a deep league maybe maybe consider it, but I don't know. But yeah, I mean if you're in a deep league maybe it was a good call because you know he, he picked it up. up. He had eleven quarter. targets. He picked it up. He yeah, had, he had eleven targets. Ben Skoranek also had like six targets. Um, yeah. And Devin Van Singletary Jefferson was out. So yeah. that may have been the contribution there. Yeah. yeah. As far as Devin Singletary goes, he, you know, I, he, he had eight carries. And so he, he took those carries for 48 yards. He made good work of them. Um, it does seem to be that he is still the lead back. I know he had a hot ending of last season, it seems to be that he's going to continue that and to continue to be that RB one there for him, especially they were running against a very good run defense, a very good run defense. And so, yeah. Um, so yeah, Devin Singletary, I think is going to, uh, is going to be a guy that can give you probably, you'll probably have a weekly flex consideration on here going on forward. I want to talk real quick before I move on about somebody that you might not be wanting to think about for for the next week or so and mm. and and let's talk about what happened to cam Akers. oh my gosh i know that he had an injury but holy cow he only I mean, had two yeah. carries he didn't yeah. even play he didn't touch the field in the first quarter i made note of it because i yeah. have daryl henderson in one league and i was like i think i gotta keep him more maybe i can use him as yeah. trade bait because wow what a stark difference between what cam Akers didn't do and how daryl henderson had 13 carries he even had five targets and five catches he had 12 yeah. points which is solid for a rb2 technically yeah i think we're going to need to see kind of what next week looks like uh against the falcons definitely not as good a defense so maybe they have certain schemes they have ready for cam Akers versus Daryl Henderson. I know Henderson is more of a lower the shoulder guy. Cam Akers is a little more elusive. Maybe they have certain certain sets and certain schemes for Cam Akers, but Cam Akers owners, I wouldn't feel good if I were you. I, I wouldn't feel good, <laughs> especially seeing just the, just just the usage. Just the zero usage points. The, yeah. The op like the usage usually is contingent on the opportunities. And if we put those two together the opportunities weren't even there. He wasn't on the field very much. And so that is definitely something to take note of. Um, beyond that, Stefan Diggs and Stefan Diggs things. Gabe Davis picked up pretty much where he left off. He did not score four touchdowns and have 200 receiving yards, but he was a deep ball guy tonight. He had um, four catches, 88 yards and a touchdown. Good for about 19 fantasy points. And so if you drafted Gabe Davis, you're feeling pretty good. I would say he can probably be on your flex radar as well. Um, but yeah, what a game. I don't think it was what we were really expecting for Not at season all. kickoff. When we're all looking <laughs> forward to this and back in SoFi and the Super Bowl champs and all this stuff. And then they just kind of got ran over. So it'll be really interesting to see kind of how things play uh, play out as we move forward. And, but as, as we move forward here in the show, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to talk about some guys that were high on and low on this week. We're going to talk about some sleepers, some busts. We're also going to talk about some, uh, some guys that we think are going to overperform their perfect or their projection and some guys that are going to underperform their projection. We're going to call those studs and duds. Uh, let's start with studs and duds though. And we'll begin Wes with your stud of the week. Who is your stud? Oh, my stud. Let me tell you, I think we're going to see over projection, o overperforming his projection to a Tonga Vailoa. Let me tell wow. you, truth is, let me start with this. He should not be your starting quarterback. Okay. Yeah. If you drafted well, he should not be your QB one. He is only rostered in 66% of leagues and he's only being started in 9% of leagues. Now, if you are starting him, it's probably because you're going to risk it for the biscuit, right? Yeah. Because Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and Chase Edmonds and a healthy Raheem Mostert, the sky is the limit for what that quarterback is. No matter who it is, that is an offense I want to, I want the quarterback for. Now we saw 
what the Eagles, what they did to the Eagles in preseason. First play of the game, 51 yard pass to Tyreek Hill. Second mm-hmm. play of the game, 13 yard pass to Tyreek Hill. That's two catches for 64 yards. And if you're playing at home, that's 8.4 points for Tyreek Hill. Now here's yeah. the beautiful thing. Tua also gets those points. So I know it's less because it's passing, but after one quarter, Tua had 121 yards and a touchdown, which would have been almost nine points. He's Mm -hmm. projected 17 for this week. That's half in just one quarter. Now, yes, the Eagles did not start all their starters for this game. And yes, Tua did not get all the 48 points that Miami put up against the Eagles, but the upside for what he can do with these receivers, it's, it's going to be incredible. And it sounds like I'm putting a lot of stock in a guy that had basically one drive with Tyreek Hill. That's because that's the drive with Tyreek Hill that we have evidence for. So just thinking about Tua with Hill and Waddle, they're an unstoppable duo. I mean, they are bound to give Tua production. They are both too good at football for both of them to have a bad game. Dolphins O-line was ranked last last season. They made significant offseason improvements, not enough to make sure that Tua is untouched, but enough to just get Tua to throw it to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddell, and they'll take it to the crib. And let me just say, my belief in Tua's upside is completely hinged on how good his receivers are. He may have the best wide receiver duo in the NFL. Right now, he's projected two touchdowns and a pick. I think it's three touchdowns, and that's going to put him over 20 fantasy points. Mike McDaniel is too excited to play with his new toys. He's going to unleash both Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, and the Patriots have had bad off-season reports from the training camp. I think it's going to be not quite Bills and Rams demolishing, but I think there's a chance that Hill and Waddle get crazy. So, Tua, I think he's my stud for this week. He's going to beat his projections. Yeah, I don't listen. The the avid Dolphins fan and Tua believer in me fully hopes you are correct. I hope they come out and they destroy and they just absolutely rip them apart. I don't I want to believe. I believe they win the game. <laughs> I want to believe. I believe they win the game. I believe they win the game by at least uh at least a score, but probably more than more than just one score. Um but I, I got to look back at, I mean, it's tough. I look back at the previous years with Tua and playing the Patriots. And let's be very clear. He is three and zero against Bill Belichick in his career, which is fantastic. By yeah. the way, he is undefeated <laughs> in those games. He has never been the guy that lights it up. But as you have said, he, he hasn't, you know, in those games, he hasn't had, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Right. And so, and so we're going to have to wait and see. I think it's going to be, what, what did you say the line was for his projection? 17 points. 17 points. Yeah. So that's about, yeah. He's projected. You know, I think, I think that's pro, I think he'll probably go over that. So I think, yeah. I think he might be, I think he is a good choice for your stud of the week, Wes. Like I said, whatever Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle do after the catch, Tua gets those points. So right. my faith is not so much that I think Tua is going to light it up. I think it's because Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell are going to light it up. And he gets all those yards and all those touchdowns. So yeah, he's my stud for week one. Noah, who's your stud muffin heading into Sunday? My mud stuffing for week <laughs> oh, yeah. one is a guy I'm super excited about this year. And it is Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams. He plays against the Las Vegas Raiders this Sunday. He is currently projected for just 13.8 fantasy points. Um, I want to go back to last season. Last season in two games against the Raiders, Mike Williams in week four scored um, two fantasy points. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Which was uh, after three straight weeks that were like lighted up on fire. And so people were a little bit like, hey, WT heck dude, like what's going on? Thank you for censoring yourself. You're welcome. Yeah. That's for the family <laughs> show. Um, and then, and then his second game against the Raiders was week 18. I think we all remember that. Cause it was the game where it was like, if they just tie, they both go to the playoffs. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, let's see. Uh, 
but that no one was playing fantasy football at that time. It was week 18. It was the last week, most leagues and week 17. And so no one was really playing fantasy football. I want to remind you in week 18 of last season, Mike Williams scored 27 fantasy points in week 18. Um, like I mm. said, sadly, no one talks about that since it was after the fantasy football season had ended, but I am a huge Mike Williams believer. He just signed a big extension. The Chargers know he's part of the future as Keenan Allen gets a little bit older. He, they love the connection between Mike Williams and Justin Herbert. I think Mike, or I think Justin Herbert lights it up this year. I think Mike Williams becomes probably his favorite target. And I think there is a good, good, good chance that against this Raiders team last, that was last year, one of the bottom pass defenses in the league and that hasn't improved upon that secondary um, that Mike Williams definitely goes over 13.8 fantasy points this season. Uh, It it should be a high scoring game. Any of these AFC West um, AFC West matchups are just, I I believe are going to be locked in for high scoring shootouts. I think all these offenses are very high powered. And so I think we do see, a little bit of a breakout in week one from Mike Williams again, similar to how he did last year. But I think that's going to be more consistent for him this year. I do believe he is going to be able to be that guy who has those 25, 30, 35 point ceiling games. And, but also has, he has a safe floor. I think his floor is probably about 15 points or so. And so I do believe he outperforms that projection for the season. That is my week one stud. I love Mike Williams. I'm starting him in the league that I have him in with Full confidence. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to watch the game and see how he does. I think it's very interesting that Mike Williams is going to be the your stud because I will be honest, I have been too concerned about his boomer bust potential from last season that I just kind of avoided drafting him. And I yeah. am excited about those 30 point potential games. And I'm a little too worried about his two point performance games. So if there is consistency or at least a much higher floor, Mike Williams will be incredible. And as you said, high scoring game against the Raiders, it should be, it should be high scoring game. Might as well be Mike Williams too. I mean, Keenan Allen will probably do well also, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think we'll find out if Mike Williams is going to be more consistent or if he's going to be another boomer bust kind of player like Tyler Lockett has been in the past few seasons. Yeah, the one thing I'll say on that is I th- I don't think they would have they would have given him the kind of extension they did to be just so boomer bust. I think the front office and the GM was probably in Brandon Staley's ear, and Brandon Staley is in Justin Herbert's ear and is saying, "Hey, this guy is very good. We need to have him be a regular guy in this offense. He needs to see seven, eight targets a game. And if he, if if you're going to give me that with the opportunity for 10 plus targets on some weeks, I, I love it. I think he's going to be great. Uh, that being said, we're going to go ahead and look at some guys that we don't think are going to be that great this week. Wes, let's go ahead and move on to our duds. Who is your dud of the week? All right. Let me set the stage here. Last year, the Dallas Cowboys kicked off the regular season just as the Bills and Rams did last night with a thriller game. This one was actually really good against the defending yeah. Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Now, the boys were led by Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper, and they were shredding the Bucs defense. It was awesome. And they were only thwarted by one of the worst non-call pass interferences I've ever seen. So they are coming back week one against the Bucks, seeking revenge, a repeat week one rematch. Ezekiel Elliott is my dud because he had six points that game. Okay. Yeah. He had 11 carries for 33 yards. Look, the Cowboys succeeded heavily in that passing game. And I remember last season, Noah, you drafted Amari Cooper and week oh. one, you were the happiest man in the Western hemisphere. I, I, mean, I started out week one with a 40 point lead and I, I couldn't have been happier. Right. I think it's going to be similar. Now looking specifically at Ezekiel Elliott, The rest of his 2021 season, Zeke had 10 touchdowns, had 10 rushing touchdowns. All of them came in the red zone. In fact, 92% of his career rushing touchdowns are in the red zone. That means he doesn't break long runs for touchdowns. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were tied for the sixth fewest red zone rushing touchdowns last season. On top of that, the Cowboys had the third 
highest passing attempts in the red zone. This means Zeke ain't scoring a touchdown. So he's projected 13 points, which I think is pretty low for a starting running back. But I think he still falls short because the Bucks average 92 yards a game, which is just not going to meet the full 13 points, especially after what they did to him last year, week one. So for me, this is why Ezekiel Elliott is going to be a dud in week one. Is it? Is that a is that a guarantee? Is that a, is that is that nearly a mark my you words? You want to mark Elliott? my words, Noah? Is that Ezekiel mark Elliott my does words? not score a touchdown this week? <sighs> Screw it. Mark my words. Oh man, Ezekiel Elliott won't score a touchdown this week. You know what, Wes? I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and make a friendly wager with you on this. Oh gosh. Okay. And whoever is correct can. Um, Whoever's correct can uh, intro the show next week. How about that? Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. All right. I am going to bet you Ezekiel Elliott finds his way into the end zone this week. Okay. Bet. Let's do it. Bet. Bet. <laughs> I bet. Bet. <laughs> well, what do you I think? I love it. Zeke, does he think, do you think, do you agree with me that he underperforms his projections? Um, what's the line at for him? 13. I did the math. You know what? I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to go on the other side of this with you. Okay. I'm actually, I'm. It, let's, let's scratch the, the touchdown. I, I think he'll go over. I think okay. he'll go. I think he'll go over 13. I do. I think he'll score over 13 points. I think he is going to be more involved in the passing game than we probably think. And so I, I think he goes over. I think he goes over 13 points. Oh, it's funny you say that because I don't think he will be involved in the passing game the way Tony Pollard is supposed to be involved in the passing game as a running mm, back. So we will yeah, find but, out. But Jamar Chase was supposed to be dropping passes uh, oh, this time last season. Puppies. So let's see. Let's see what the Come reports do that. to us here. All right. Let's see what the reports do. <laughs> let's hear who your dud of week one is, Noah. Yeah, my dud of week one, we're going to stay in this, actually, in this Sunday night football matchup. I'm going to flip over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side of things. My dud for the week is going to be Chris Godwin. Mm-hmm. Um, he yeah. is currently projected 12.6 fantasy points. Uh, last year, it was, like you said, this is a fantastic game. He exploded onto the scene. He had nine catches, 105 yards and a touchdown, good for nearly 24 fantasy points. It's a fantastic game. There's no denying the talent that Chris Godwin has. I just don't know coming back from this ACL tear that he had less than nine months ago. I don't know if I see him getting tons of work and producing in fantasy football this early on. The word right now is that he's going to be a game time decision. And since the bucks play Sunday night football this week with just one other game to play after that on Monday night with the um, the Denver Broncos at Seattle, I, I don't know if it's worth risking potentially not having another player in your lineup. If you're, if you're counting on Godwin, and he ends up not playing or he ends up only being on a very, very strict pitch count or something like that. Currently projected for 12.6 fantasy points. I think he goes under. Again, it's nothing about the talent. I think he's very good. I just don't know about the opportunities that he's going to get. And he was just recently on a podcast actually speaking with someone about how it, it really the, the Bucks are allowing this to be his decision for his for him and himself and his wife and his uh, his physical therapist, they're allowing him to make this decision on when he feels good to come back full strength. I think Chris Godwin's a smart guy. I think he is, I think he is, knows that he's young. He has a career ahead of him. I don't think he wants to rush himself back. I don't think week one needs to be the benchmark. And so I, I think he's going to go ahead and take this slow. I think he, if he, like I said, if he does play, I think he's going under this 12.6 projection. And I think, I, I think he's going to be smart. And, and honestly, I, I don't know if he actually will play, but if he does, I don't think he meets that mark. You said he had 12 projected points. Is that right? Uh, 12.6. Yeah. 12.6. You know what? I, I think at the most he matches, I'm going to agree with you on this yeah. dud for week one, just because there's an injury. And I mean, at one point we thought he wasn't even going to play until December. I mean, that's yeah. how the injury looks. So as as much as Brady loves Chris Godwin, I, I think it's going to look more like just it's going to be Brady and Evans four quarters. So yeah, I think so. I agree. And, and the and, injury and, alone. Yeah, and and I'm 
pretty thrilled about that, by the way, just, uh, just yeah, in case anyone yeah. was wondering here, <laughs> um, those are going to be our studs and duds. Those will just be based on uh, some of those projections who we think performs, uh, outperforms, underperforms that kind of thing. But we're going to dive into a little bit here of sleepers and busts. There's not really benchmarks here, Wes. I think it's just guys that I think you need to be getting talked about a little more either for being, people that we think can be can be great and aren't being talked about or people that are being talked about a little too much that shouldn't be. Uh, why don't we jump into sleepers first, Wes? Who's going to be your sleeper for the week? Yeah, and just to, to finish what you're saying about the sleepers and busts, you know, I, I also want to mention this is just for week one, you know, but yeah. for, for, for the busts at least, you know, we already did our season bus. You already know DK and Deontay are going to be the yeah. worst players in the whole NFL. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for sleepers, I actually think this is a potential season sleeper. I'm going to talk about New York Giants wide receiver Kadarius Tony. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of hype on him last year, but let me let me start with what's happened this year. Reports coming out of camp during preseason and training camp during the offseason say that the current wide receiver one in the depth chart for the New York Giants, Kenny Galladay, is terrible. Yeah. He's so terrible, in fact, that The Athletic spoke with their new head coach, Brian Dable, and he didn't rule out cutting Galladay after their last preseason. Apparently, it's just because of the salary cap they're going to keep him. My goodness, dude. Yeah, How bad do you have to be to be the starting receiver and mess it up that badly? Now, there's an infamous low light from the preseason where Kenny Galladay put in, like, the worst blocking effort I've ever seen since, like, Tim Tebow was a tight end for Jacksonville last year. Yeah. I mean, it, it was bad. This means that either Sterling Shepard or Kadarius Toney, if they put in any effort at all, they're going to be promoted to wide receiver one in a matter of weeks. That's a possibility. Now – let me talk specifically about Kadarius Tony. why I think he's the sleeper between the two. Check this out. I'm going to throw it back. Dante Hall. Remember wow. him? Yeah. Chief superstar, a.k.a. the human joystick, a.k.a. X Factor. He has one of the greatest jukes in NFL history. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just type in Dante Hall juke. You could just type understand. in greatest juke in NFL history. And it's that the may first also video that comes up. It's really that could video. also show up too. Yeah, Kadarius Tony's nickname is also Human Joystick. Last season, Week Five against the Cowboys, he amazed all of us. He had ten catches for 189 yards. The very next week, he tweaked his ankle and has basically been dealing with that injury ever since. But now, he's 100 percent healthy. So if you want, you can watch those Cowboy highlights with Kadarius Sony against them and tell me that in the fourth quarter with six minutes and 30 seconds ago, that is not the same juke that Dante Hall did. It's identical. It is the same. This guy is incredibly talented. He's only rostered in 82% of leagues. So there's a chance he's still there for a free agent for a waiver if you want to grab him. If you're willing to drop someone, I don't think – He's likely a better option than your flex starter for week one, but he's a better option than Kenny Galladay. I'll tell you that. Sterling Shepard is also dealing with an Achilles injury right now. So that may elevate Kadarius Tony's produ- productivity for week one. Do not be surprised if Kadarius Tony accelerates as the number one option in New York week one against the Titans. He's my sleeper. Maybe, maybe for the season, or one of them at least, but definitely for week one, Kadarius Tony. Yeah, I really like it, man. I, I was, um, you know, I was a little bit uh, ahead of the ahead of the crowd there on Kadarius Tony last season. I remember, I, I went ahead and picked him up, and and I had him on the bench, but I, I picked him up and had him on my bench the week against the Cowboys. And I remember in our fantasy group chat, we were like. Why does Noah already have this guy? Like, what? Why? Why can't he get to be a waiver pickup? Like, why does he already have him? I love Kadarius Tony. I've drafted him in at least one of my leagues this season. I think he is going to be a great value. I think he could be a yeah. I think he could be a, a major sleeper this week, and if not, just just for the whole season. Like, 
I, I really believe that he has the opportunity to emerge as this, uh, as this, you know, main receiver for Daniel Jones and this new Brian Dable offense. Um, we saw Josh Allen, you know, take a leap with Dable being his OC. And so with Dable being the head coach there, we might see Daniel Jones make a leap and make some passes that he hasn't before. And that frees up Darius Tony and puts up his potential. Um, they're playing Tennessee who doesn't have a great pass defense. Uh, they, they have a lot of rookies out there. And so, um, you know, if I was a rookie and for I was playing for the Tennessee Titans, I wouldn't be able to stop Kadarius Tony. So I don't no know why way. they'll be able to. It's, we're at the same athletic level, but it's all good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, we are both of us. No, I love it though. I love it. <laughs> I, I think Kadarius Tony does definitely have that have the opportunity to be a good sleeper for week one. I like him enough that I already offered Noah a trade, and Noah is smart enough to have declined that trade. I did, yeah. Before the show. So uh, high hopes for Kadarius Tony. Noah, let's yeah. talk about your little uh, sleepy sleeper. Who's your sleeper for week one, Noah? <laughs> My little sleepy guy for week one uh, is going to be Elijah Moore, New York Jets wide receiver, Elijah Moore versus the Baltimore Ravens. Um, if anyone's confused about all the shakeups in the league this season, don't get this one confused. The Jets still are going to be playing from behind for this whole game. It's not like anything crazy has happened. And... And, oh, oh, Devontae Adams to the Raiders, Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins. Oh, no, the Jets are still the Jets, and they're still <laughs> going to be playing from behind. Uh, and so, actually, with Zach Wilson out, was was originally why I actually ended up switching over and making this adjustment for Elijah Moore to be my sleeper for the week. Um, Flacco steps in against his former team and I think actually benefits Elijah Moore tremendously this week. Uh, in two games last year, played with Joe Flacco, Elijah Moore saw 17 targets over the two game span. He had 11 receptions for 185 yards and two touchdowns. And he averaged 21.5 fantasy points over those games with Joe Flacco. Uh, if you're unsure about a flex play this week and Elijah Moore is out there, I really think he can be a sneaky good play for you in a game where they're going to need to throw with a quarterback that Elijah Moore already has this good rapport with. I don't think Garrett Wilson is going to, really do do much to interfere as far as things go there. Uh, and so I really actually do. I like Elijah Moore this week as a, as a little bit of a sleeper for maybe a flex play. If you, know, if you're unsure of maybe what's going to happen with Alan Lazard and he was in your flex, I wouldn't feel bad if you wanted to pivot over to Elijah Moore. I think it would be a great play for you. I think he has a really good chance at being a good sleeper this week. I think that is a true sleeper option. Picking yeah. a wide receiver for the Jets with Joe Flacco as the quarterback. I, I, I mean, I have, I, he is great. He is a talented wide receiver. I can't really add to it because as you said, it's the Jets and yeah, they'll be playing behind, but I don't know how that O-line will do. I don't know how Joe Flacco will be able to kind of, it was Mike white. I'd be like, yeah, okay, sure. I buy it. But yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence with your sleeper. I, don't know. I think I, there was a bit of a uh, a, bit, a bit of an interesting quote that we actually got from Garrett Wilson uh, in training camp this season. Oh, Garrett Wilson, yeah. their the rookie receiver uh, from Ohio State that they drafted, he he was asked what the difference was adjusting between playing with Joe Flacco and playing with Zach Wilson, and and his answer was, I think Joe Flacco throws him more receiver friendly ball <laughs> so so he's better is what we're saying so Joe Flacco is a better quarterback than Zach Wilson according uh. to his receivers I think it's gonna be really interesting I think we saw Elijah Moore have success with Joe Flacco last season I think I you know the Jets had a great offseason I think they had a really good offseason I know they had an injury to uh Makai I believe it was Makai Becton I do believe they brought in Dwayne Brown um, to fill in that role or Trent Brown. Maybe it was, I'm not sure. One of those, one of those offensive tackles, one of those guys who was out there way later than he should have been in free agency. Um, so I, I think, I think we see a decent game out of Elijah Moore. I think he's a bit of a sleeper. All right. For that quote alone. Okay. I buy it. Buy Just in. for the, for the receiver friendly passes from Joe Flacco. Okay. Buy in, sure. Wes, buy in. <laughs> Let's move on to our busts for the week, for week one of this beautiful fantasy football season. Who is your bust of week one? 
Apparently, we got a lot going on with this Sunday night game. We do not like a couple of these guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bold claim here. <clears throat> Leonard Fournette will be a week one bust. Wow. Zeke would have been my bust had Leonard Fournette's projections not have been so high compared to the stats I'm about to drop on you. This has nothing to do with his weight, by the way. I just want to make this clear. This has nothing to do with the weight rumors from the offseason. He's healthy and he's in shape. He's in great shape. Yeah. Yeah. This has to do with the fact that Leonard Fournette has a rough track record for week one performances. Since 2018, he averages just 36 yards in week one games. He has had zero touchdowns. And on fantasy, he averages 8.4 points a game. That's just for week one stats. On top of that, he's also fumbled. So you you want to build a narrative a little more. He has more fumbles than he does touchdowns in week one games. Okay, hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm not calling Leonard Fournette a bust. He is not a season-long bust. He's not a bad pick. But I'm just saying that his week one track record does not bode well for your second or third round draft pick. Now, you're going to have to start him. I understand, okay? If I had him in one of my leagues, I would still probably start him knowing this. He could very well be your RB1 on your roster. I get it. But I want to give you the word of warning that his current projections are at 17 points, but his history shows at week one, he's going to get half of that. That's why... The math says Leonard Fournette is going to be a week one bust. Huh. <laughs> huh. When did you become such a math guy, Wes? You're such Fantasy a, ma- football you're such, did you're such a math guy now, man. Um, <laughs> listen, the Dallas Cowboys have a very, very I'll, I'll give them two very, very good defense. Micah Parsons is already like a top five player at his position. He's, he's very good. He's very, very good. This defense is very, very good. I, I don't want it to be true because I love Leonard Fournette and we saw what he was doing at the end of the year. So I don't know that I'm, I'm going to buy in on the, Oh, it's week one just sucks, man. I don't know. Look, I don't know what to tell you. You just said it. He does great at the end of the year. It takes him some time to get the ball rolling. That's why his nickname is Playoff Lenny. Yeah. Not start of the season, Lenny. Look, and at the least, this is just to give you some history so that if he does this bad, which it looks like he might, just from what I'm, I've looked at with the math, if he yeah. does poorly, don't panic because this is how he does in week one. So don't panic. On the flip Good side, shit. maybe, maybe, Maybe take the bait. Maybe go try to trade for him. You see he gets seven, eight points or worse. You know it's not a season bust. He's a week one flop. That's how he's been the last since 2018. That's yeah. my take. I'll take um, it. I'll buy it. I, okay. I, 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 I'm not going to be I, – I, I have – Wes, you are heard. Thank you. And, you and, and I have analyzed what you've said. If it comes out and he, and he doesn't do uh, – he doesn't meet his projection and he, and he, you know, falls in that like eight point mark or something like that. Kudos. Also, if he comes out and scores 25 points, I'm not, I won't be surprised. Like it's, it's, I, I, sure. I know what he's capable of, but the numbers do support this opportunity for him to be a bust. And so I will go ahead and uh, I'll, 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 I'll respect it. I'll respect the take and hope that it's wrong because I am starting Leonard Fournette. You have in, to in, in a league this week. So, yeah, so I I'm, mean, there's no reason you can't start. Him. Yeah. Hi, I mean, that's it actually, but I understand with that being said, let's finish this with Noah, your week one bust. Who do you have that looks like they're going to do pretty bad on Sunday? Yeah. My, my week one bust for, for this 2022 season was almost going to be my bust for the whole 2022 season. And it's Brees Hall, the New York Jets running back against the Baltimore Ravens. For anyone that may have just jumped into the episode, not that this <laughs> is live or anything, but if you're yeah. just now starting to listen, I just explained how with Joe Flacco starting against the Ravens, the Jets are going to be throwing the football a lot. 
making this opportunity for Brees Hall very unappealing. Uh, it's going to be a pass heavy game. Doesn't favor fantasy projection or fantasy production for Brees Hall. Make it's that's that's a big thing. What they're going to be passing a lot. I don't believe that Brees Hall gets heavily involved. I believe Michael Carter is probably going to be more of the passing back. Um, you know, and so he's my bust for this week. And like I said, he he he's probably going to land on this list a lot over the next four months or so. He was almost my bust for this whole season. The Jets don't have a run friendly game script until week 12 against the Bears. Uh, that means for 11 weeks, 10 weeks, because I think they got a bye week in there somewhere. But for, for 10 weeks, I'm not going to feel good having Brees Hall in my lineup because I don't think there are going to be consistent opportunities for him to produce in fantasy football. They don't have a very good schedule lined up for that. I think they're going to be throwing a lot in these games every single time. Don't get it wrong. I think Brees Hall will be great in the league. His combine stats and his college stats are elite. He produces at an elite rate when he is given the opportunity, but with how this offense is going to have to be playing, I don't think it's going to be the time for him to be great, especially when this week one matchup and probably for most of the season. But that is why for week one, Brees Hall is my bus for the week. Yeah, I, I like your perspective on just the game situation, just kind of comparing the offenses and defenses and evaluating yeah. whether or not someone like a running, if a running back is going to be in a situation where their team is going to be winning in the third and fourth corner. Uh, and you actually, when I was looking up some of these red zone stats to find out how the Bucks did against uh, the rush, the Baltimore Ravens were like top three in yeah. every category for rushing. They have a great rush defense. So yeah. I, I agree. I agree that, that there's a, it's a very, very, very likely scenario, almost guaranteed that the Jets will be losing in the third and fourth quarter, which means they won't be running. So Brees Hall has got two quarters to go against the best rush defense in his first week in the NFL. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Even Michael Carter, I think he has PPR upside that might get him to maybe seven points. I don't know. But I I, I am going to – I don't have any Jets running backs in my – leagues but i would still shy away from Brees hall yeah definitely definitely agree i i am in a league with somebody who had to auto draft uh and two of their top three running backs are Brees hall and michael carter and so i Both do not of them. wow i do not envy <laughs> their running back situation uh especially given how i think bright Bre- uh sorry Brees hall does in this week one matchup he is my bust for the week That is going to be all the time we have for this episode. Wherever you are listening, we'd appreciate it if you give the episode five stars, write something funny in the review. We'll chuck it on the episode and we'll go ahead and shout you out. We're on social media everywhere at fourth and troll fantasy or at fourth and troll on Facebook. We are fourth and troll fantasy. Look out for our mascot, Tutty the troll and make him smile by giving us a follow and joining us next time every Tuesday and Friday. I'm Noah Selby. And I'm Wes Selby. And this has been 4th and Troll Fantasy.